Hi, my name's Josh and we're here at the Natural History Museum in Tring with one of our senior curator of birds, Douglas Russell. And we're going to talk a bit more about kiwis. If you haven't seen our surprising science on the um, rather large kiwi egg with Douglas, then do go check that out. But we're just going to chat a bit more about these amazing birds. Um, and so first of all, welcome Douglas. Hello. <laughs> Lovely to be here. Um, can we just start explaining a bit more about where kiwis come from um, and sort of, I guess, what they do and why they look so amazing? Okay, so the five species of kiwi are endemic to New Zealand. Mm -hmm. And New Zealand is a fantastically beautiful place and it is also home to some of the most incredible birds on the planet. And what, what makes the sort of avifauna of uh, New Zealand sort of um, so, so incredible? So New Zealand has been isolated for a very long time. And so uh, many of the birds of New Zealand, many of the bird families in New Zealand are not found anywhere else. And that certainly applies to kiwi, perhaps most famous as the national bird of New Zealand. In Maori, they are known as tokoweka, mm -hmm. oh, which means, that? well, so that means weka with a walking stick. And that is a reference to another bird in New Zealand called the weka, which is a very large brown rail, which looks superficially quite similar to kiwi, and it's very long bill. A walking because stick. Because it does look like a weka with a walking stick. And that leads us perfectly on. I mean, uh, they are quite extraordinary birds to look at, and sort of not your traditional bird build, I guess. Um, why do they have such long bills like this? So, uh, not all kiwi species have that length of bill um, and the females have slightly longer bills than the males and uh, they are flightless so they are mostly nocturnal and this means that they need to be able to probe around in the dark mm -hmm. using their very very uh, refined sense of smell to find small invertebrates that they feed upon. And I was lucky enough to be in New Zealand in 2018 on the island of Ulva, just off Stewart Island on the south coast of New Zealand. And I spent uh, one of the finest hours of my life following a southern uh, brown kiwi uh, through the forest and watching it very gently probe into the leaf litter to find its prey. That does sound delightful. I, was, uh, I, I <laughs> challenge you to find a finer way to spend a day. And I guess that, I mean, we were talking about it a little bit earlier, but I guess that explains why their, their nose is right at the very tip of the bill, right? Yes, so their nostrils are right at the tip of the bill, and that allows them to probe down into the leaf litter, find the prey, delicious lunch. <laughs> and the prey includes, I'm assuming, sort of like earthworms? And earthworms, snails, small insects, you know, anything basically that they can catch. And it also, I mean, I'm fascinated by these lovely long whiskery. I mean, I'm, I mean, they look like fur. Yeah. But they're not fur, right? No, so uh, they're birds. So all of their covering is modified feathers. Mm -hmm. And around the base of the bill, you have some small modified feathers which are used uh, basically as sensory organs to help them in terms of that uh, overall job, which is to find lunch. Mm. So they are fulfilling effectively the same function as whiskers, but they're just made of feathers. Yes, yeah, exactly. That's amazing. Um, and we were talking a bit, or oh, you were talking a bit earlier at least, about the size of, the massive size of the kiwi eggs. Yep. I was wondering if you could talk us through a bit more about their sort of their breeding behaviour, I mean their nests, and like how they sort of they manage that side of things. So. Kiwi are birds that nest in burrows. Mm. And it's the big spiky feet. I'm yeah, exactly. So the, 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 both males and females help dig the burrow and they will, build, uh, they will dig a new burrow uh, for each new breeding attempt. Okay. Uh, and there can be more than one breeding attempt each year. And the reason that they lay these extraordinarily, infamously large eggs is that it's a real investment mm -hmm. of time and effort. Mm -hmm. And you're basically putting all of your eggs in one basket. Excellent. And essentially what they want to do is to ensure that when the chick, there's a huge amount of yolk inside there. So eggs are all made up of yolk mm -hmm. and albumin and the shell itself. The huge amount of yolk in there allows the chick to hatch at a point when it's pretty much ready to run around and go. It's what we call precocial. And 
it means that within a few days, they're able to leave the burrow and start feeding on their own. Wow. And that's a huge advantage because although they exist in a world or evolved in a world where there was no mammalian predators, there were bird predators and right. terror came from the skies. And that was the point that it was really important that your chicks could move. And run away and really quickly. Run away quickly. Ah, that's amazing. Um, you mentioned <laughs> quite extraordinarily that they might lay more than one egg per year, despite yep. that size. Yep. It must be a huge investment in energy. So, especially since you have to remember that the incubation is one of the longest of all birds. So the birds will incubate for up to about three months. <gasps> Wow. Okay. So that is a long time to look after your egg. Mm. Only something like the wandering albatross mm. has a longer incubation. So I mean that's amazing. So they're, almost, so, so they're not just almost looking like mammals. They're also similarly sort of breeding strategy of having like one large young. Piece. Well, in this case, what they're doing is they're investing all of that time and effort into that one breeding attempt, and it tries to make sure that. Um, you have the best possible advantage mm -hmm. in your young. Because like everything else on Earth, what matters is breeding. Mm. What matters is passing on your genes to the next generation. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. And they're doing a fantastic, well, they were doing a fantastic job. I was going to ask you. I mean, obviously that um, was good in the past for what they were doing, but in modern times, maybe that is a slight disadvantage considering... Um, the threats that they're now facing. So all of the five currently recognised species of kiwi are considered to be at risk. Mm. Um, and some are at greater risk than others, certainly. The biggest challenge is the introduction by man of mammalian predators like stoats. Uh, and that continues to be a huge threat to their existence. But there are some fantastic people working in New Zealand to conserve kiwis and the rest of the avifauna. And yeah, the future is reasonably bright. That's lovely. Um, well, thank you so much for taking the time to sort of chat us all through these genuinely fascinating and incredible birds. They are gorgeous, they are beautiful, and they are perhaps one of nature's greatest treasures. Yeah, hard to argue with that. Wow, what a fascinating chat with Douglas. My favorite fact was that Kiwis have evolved their own form of whiskers. What was your favorite fact? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed what you watched, then don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.